This is the VoiceOver Gurus Podcast. Real talk about the voiceover industry with your hosts, Linda Bruno and JJ Wilson. When, when my yeah. father was doing, I'm sorry, I didn't have a chance to eat breakfast. I was at the emergency vet this morning at 8.30. Yeah. Welcome back to the VoiceOver Gurus podcast. Hello, JJ. You finished chewing on your cookie? Almost. Okay, so swallow. Hi, this is JJ Wilson. Give us a voiceover swallow. Mm-hmm. <laughs> <laughs> You know, they asked for that in a script. <laughs> this is so good. There's, a, um, there's, a, there's another man on our podcast. I know. Hope you know who he is. Yes. I don't, you know, I'd be sitting there. <laughs> I know, I know. Today, we are lucky enough to have someone who's got a completely different whole set of skills that are completely different from me and JJ, which we love. And I used also, to have them. But I used I to have them. I, I, yeah, I, I lost them long ago. But want to say hello to Paul Schmidt. How are you? Hi, Linda. Hi, JJ. I'm well. Hi, Paul. It's great to be here. Thank you for having me. Yeah, this is great because we love to share anything that we can with our listeners, especially stuff that we are not professional at or like pros at. Um, obviously, we've done it with our career, but things have changed. The landscape has changed. You think? And we need... We would love for you to share your insight on that. So why don't we just get a little background from you? Sure. So uh, I came into VO through broadcasting. I was a radio guy, right? I was on the air for about 15 years. And uh, where? In, uh, in mostly in Wilmington, Delaware. And I started in Baltimore, Maryland. Okay. Gotcha. Um, and, I think, well, we all started in radio. Yeah. Well, I mean, it feels like it sometimes, right? Yeah. You know, you know I how did. it goes. Uh, Clients will come to you and they'll say, hey, we love our radio spot. Would you do our cable spot? And you do yep. the same That's how it started. radio read for the cable as you do for the radio. They don't know the difference yep. and you don't know the difference. And you make a little side money and everybody's happy, right? Yep. Um, I got and- to the point that somebody did that to me when I was working at the radio stations doing production. He said, I'll give you 50 bucks if you let me run this on Channel 7. And I went, okay. And two years later, I got to the point where I quit my job and I've never had one since. Nice. <laughs> Knock Very on wood. Nice. Yeah. Sometimes you- I wish I did. <laughs> it was a lot slower boil for me. Um, but I stayed in radio for quite a while, and then I moved to the internet side of radio. I came off the air. I still had a few voiceover clients, still kept my feet wet, got into technology sales and learned how to do that. was pretty successful at that mostly, um, and uh, always still had a client or two or three or five, you know, hanging around and come back every now and again. All and, counts funny. Yeah. Yeah. Strange, you know. One, two, um, three, five. And so uh, at, at one point, I had sold a million point seven dollar uh, dollar website to EY, the big accounting firm. And one of the project managers for our company said, hey, why don't we do an onboarding video for them? And I said, great, I'll voice it. You know, we'll have a blast. And we did. And they loved it. And they came back and they asked us for a couple of more. And each time I went, you know what? I love this work. I should do more of it. And by the third time I went, you moron, you love this work. You should do more of it. Right. Mm-hmm, mm-hmm. And that's when I went from passive to active. And uh, and I had explored voiceover 25 years ago and had a, a pen pal relationship with Sandy Thomas. If you remember Sandy in the 90s, yes. you couldn't <laughs> swing a dead cat without hitting a Sandy Thomas spot. Right. Oh, and yeah. Sandy helped me and befriended me. And no, wait, uh, which Sandy Thomas are we talking about? This was good. God, he did just about everything he did. Help oh, me. Sandy Thomas. He's Sandy Thomas. Okay. Yeah. Yeah. Sandy and I were good friends. We worked at Love 94 together. He may or may not remember me. We li- remember letters. Remember we used to write letters to each other? No. Uh, we, no, we, we wrote letters time. and then I think we did an email or two. Uh, but he wrote a book called, So You Want to Be a Voiceover Star. And, and I read that book and got in touch with him and he was immensely helpful. Long story short, I didn't get anywhere 25 years ago because you had to have an agent and you had to have, you know, you had to be able to go to the booth and I was working full time in radio and I wasn't always available and yeah. I didn't know yeah. how to do anything in the yeah. business then. And I crashed and burned and, and it just became a side thing for so long. And then several years ago, you love this work, you should do more of it. I said, you know what, that's that's absolutely true. So let me get better coaching. Let me get better demos. Let me start pers- actively pursuing work. And then when I found out, you know, because as you guys just said, the world had changed, right? When I learned that I could go get my own work, well, 
Hell, I had sales training. I could do that. Rather than selling for somebody else, I could sell for me. Yeah. And that's when the gloves came off. And I spent six months building a plan um, and putting all the pieces in place before I really jumped headlong into it. And once I did from that point on, I was full time in nine months. Wow. So, wow. and that's, that's yeah, that's not typical. And I will say, not even recommended. In retrospect, I jumped too early, right? I described my early career in full time in voiceover. It's like an Indiana Jones movie, right? Like I knew enough to jump in the biplane and get the engine started and get it rolling down the highway uh, or the runway, but I clipped the wing on the barn and then I lost the landing gear on the trees and it took me a while to get things sort of level and stable. And uh, and I learned a lot of hard lessons on the way, which I try to try to pass along, but I jumped a little bit too early. Interesting. So I know you have a very similar approach that we do where we we're pretty honest with everyone and Try just transparent about it just because, you know, we have to be in this business because there's a lot and because of nobody else is. <laughs> I, know, I, know. I think I think I think most people are honest. I think uh, in our business, we have our fair share of snake oil salesmen that people that will sell you a dream and gladly take your money yeah. and give you very little value. But I think most people. Uh, are forthright and upright and uh, and and are looking out for their brothers and sisters in the business. Mm -hmm. Yeah, there are you a, lot a of positive people. outlook. I like that. <laughs> it's good. You have to have yes. you have to have. So tell us about what it is that you help uh, voice talent do if they work with you. So essentially, I concentrate on the marketing and sales and business growth side of the business. And you and I were talking, you know, off mic, and Ed, I think you even said it when we when we started the podcast, Linda. You know, you said something like, "I don't have skills in this area." Well, yeah. you, you do now because you've been at it for thirty years, yeah. right? Yeah. But but you guys had to learn it somewhere because the fact of the matter is, most people come into this business without sales or marketing skills or experience or expertise. And that's not their fault. That's just the way the world is, right? Not everybody comes from mm -hmm. a sales background. I happened to, because I got out of radio and into the sales side of radio and then into technology sales, I got a lot of sales training mm. um, and learned, I think, fortunately, I learned very complex sales, right? Where you spend six months learning about the client before you even reach out. Um, but what we do in voiceover is much more transactional, but a lot of the concepts, uh, translate, right? Mm -hmm. um, so that's where I concentrate and, and kind of stay in my lane. I'm kind of in the space of, you know, a couple of other guys I respect and Mark Scott and Tom Deere. We all essentially do the same sort of thing, a little, little bit differently, right? Mm -hmm. um, I got a lot of respect for those guys. We disagree respectfully on some things about how to do certain things and what tools to use. But at the end of the day, we're all teaching a basic process, right? Um, or a basic plan. So, um, and that is how you how to grow your voiceover business because most people don't have that that skill walking in the door. No, right? and you and need. We learned it by the seat of our pants because yeah. we come from a different era. <laughs> right. Trial and error. Yeah, sure. Yeah. And mine. that takes a long time, right? It takes a long time to, you know, conventional wisdom. People will tell you that it takes three to five years, maybe more, to build a full time clientele in this business, and I think that's largely true. I think it can take longer for a lot of people and. Yeah. What got me started on this odyssey was I was seeing in social media and hearing anecdotally and occasionally even a friend or two would just get fed up and sick and tired of trying to find work. And it wasn't because they weren't trained. It wasn't because they weren't talented. Pardon me, I drank my coffee too fast. It wasn't because they were unmotivated or lazy or didn't want to do the work. It's because they didn't know how to find the work. We're really great in this business at training people how to do the work, right? Yeah. But not how to find it. And that's the part that's changed drastically that you guys alluded to up front that is so different now than it was 20 or 25 years ago. We can now go get a ton of work directly, mm -hmm. right? You don't have to be union. You don't necessarily have to have an agent. You can go directly after the client if you know how. And most people don't. That's therein lies the secret that yeah. I want. I need answers to. Um, yeah, because in the old old days, I don't like to say old days because it makes me feel like I'm really old. But, um, you know, long ago, it, I, I guess the same concepts still apply, though, is you need to expose your 
sound your demo, your talents to as many ears as possible to up your chances of getting a client. Um, it's just now the vehicles are slightly different. Yes, um, they are. And they're less, there are less gatekeepers than there were, right? Mm -hmm. I still hear this notion of gatekeepers in voiceover and I laugh because you guys have been around enough to long enough to know there really were gatekeepers and Today, in some genres, there still are, right? High-end commercial work, video games, animation, right? A lot of those are still controlled by, and rightfully so, by casting directors and talent agents. Right? Yeah. But a lot of corporate, when, when, when the internet happened, uh, when every company, in effect, became a media company, right? Mm -hmm. I have a student in my program. Uh, he signed up maybe about two months ago. And the week he signed up, he said he got a client. It was the guy who fixed his brakes, right? He took his car in to have his brakes serviced. The guy that runs the garage does YouTube videos to bring people into the garage, mm -hmm. and he now narrates the guy's um, uh, YouTube channel. So right. every company now, and that's a, a, a just one illustration, every company is a media company, right? Uh, and a, certainly the Fortune 500s are, the Fortune 1000s, everybody is. So there's more work out there now for us voice actors than there ever has been in history, if you know how to find it. True. Right? How, do you, how do we differentiate ourselves, though? Because there's so many voice talent that are out there looking for work. So right? many yeah. voice talent. <laughs> there are. Uh, number one, and, and I, I think the, the answer most people expect is some sort of branding or hook sort of answer you won't get that from me i think number one is get good at what you do thank right? you so much for saying that paul because i was just going to say the bottom line is if you suck it doesn't matter how you market it doesn't like you've you got know, to get you've got to be really really good you've got it and that's got to be priority number one for the first year to two right because you, i see with all these platforms and things like that and when i started i never had an agent I never marketed. It was word of mouth. Yeah. yeah. There were eight studios in Miami and word got around. Yeah. I was making a fortune. Just yeah. my beeper would go off 75 times a day and I never had to do anything. And then it, you know, things started to change. And then I would do interesting things. Like one of my clients I hadn't heard from a while. I sent him a hundred demos. He had a pretty big company wow. and he called me up and he goes, JJ, you're such a <laughs> and I went, he said, come pick these up. I know you're there, but by God, the next day I got a gig. Yeah. Whatever you have to do. But where was I? What was I talking about? Performance. Oh, with all the, yeah, the performance. Um, I think there are, you know, the, the people at the bottom who are just getting started and some people who shouldn't be doing it. Then there's 92% of the people who are pretty good. I agree. And then there's the top 10%, 8%. And it's just, you know, you can make a living being pretty good. Yes, you can. Especially, you know, um, I had the opportunity to go to New York for a while. I, I did very well, knock on wood. It was many years ago, but I didn't want to live that life. Right. I wanted to be a big fish in a smaller pond, not really small, but, and, and, and you know, I'm, I read some things on your website about you, your first priority is your kids. So I immediately liked you. Oh, <laughs> I immediately liked you. Yeah. And I just, yeah. Yeah. And they're, they're I don't have the worlds. energy anymore to tackle I don't either. New York City. <laughs> and I'm right <laughs> outside of it. That was the whole reason why I moved up here. And for the all those years I had, I had it. Yes. Get on the train. Yes. Go to the casting directors. Yes. Go meet my, you know, meet up with my yes. agents. And now, you know, you get to that point. Well, for us anyway, where I'm like, okay, I'm good. I'm comfortable in my studio. I have six or seven agents. We audition all day long. Yeah. And that's pretty much all we can do. But it's unless like, we cold call, which that I'm, I'm just not into anymore. How do you anymore. know about cold calling, Paul? That's a good question. So a lot of people swear by cold calling. And I oh, think I never swear, Paul. God damn it. <laughs> <laughs> I think, you know, number one is, you know, I've heard Mark Scott say, for instance, the kind of work marketing that works best is the kind that you'll do. And I think there's some value in that. Mm. I do think that cold calling is highly inefficient. Uh, some statistics will say that, uh, you know, it takes upwards of 18 cold calls to get somebody on the line. Right. Yeah. yeah. Uh, people don't file voicemails like they do emails, right? So if you were to play your demo on a voicemail, it's not going to have the same shelf oh, life. Oh God, people does. do that? Yes. Or oh, that's they, or they try and leave a <laughs> they try and leave a wonderful voicemail message, which really shows off the voice. Right. 
Um, okay. That I meant fun. email when I was talking about it. <laughs> okay. Okay. Oh, wait, wait, wait. Here. Wait. Listen. <laughs> Yeah. Hey, if you're oh, wait, I'm in a bad out. area. I'm driving. Wait. <laughs> if your email goes out, make sure you email customer support. Uh, <laughs> so I, the, I think that cold calling is highly inefficient. When I started my plan to go full time, of course, I still had a full time day job, which meant I couldn't cold call during normal business hours, right? Because I had to work for my employer then. So I had to figure out a way. How do I get in front of people during normal business hours reliably and scalably, scalably without being able to call them? And email, I think, is the is the best tool. Oh, yeah, absolutely. Yeah. Far and away. Yeah. Um, if you do it right. And there are a billion ways, of course, uh, to do it wrong. To finish the thought about how do we differentiate ourselves in a world where we're becoming as um, numerous as realtors, right? You, yeah. you you can't swing a dead cat without hitting a realtor, and it's getting that way for voice actors. Uh, number Linda, one, Linda, Paul's got a lot of dead cats. I, do. I know. House, I have five I at home, so <laughs> yeah. Okay. Well. Let's swing something else. <laughs> okay. My son said the other day, "You can't swing a dead horse," and I'm thinking, "Well, that's a lot of work." Right. <laughs> Things you never hear. <laughs> Hand me that piano, Paul. <laughs> what? Yeah. So uh, cold calling, I think, is inefficient. Uh, I think email works best. To, on, on the differentiation thing, just to finish that up, you have to be good at what you do. I don't think that branding is as important as many people make it out to be. Thank you. Um, I do think you have I to. I love you, Paul. I, thank you. <laughs> JJ, I feel very strongly about you as well. Thank you. I just, these people call and they say, do you want to see what my studio looks like? And I go, nope. <laughs> nope. No. But thanks for calling. No. And the thing oh my God, to... should I put pink pillows or blue ones? Right. I don't care. If you're, if you're recording it, I sounds see. like that. You can put 40 pillows in. Doesn't matter. I'm not going to hire you. <laughs> yep. I, I always. If you're constantly to... ready, right? Yes. If they get off track so easily. Yeah. Yeah. Well, I'm going to go to 17 different coaches. <laughs> Even though. You guys are the first ones to give me my first job. I'm still going to go somewhere else. And I've got to worry about, I, I spent $5,000 on my logo. Mm -hmm. Great. That's the biggest. Great. How's your demo? Are exactly. you going for work? Are you auditioning? No, not yet. Yeah. <laughs> okay. <laughs> People get sucked into the minutia of the logo and the website and they strategically, the website still comes out poorly oftentimes, right? Mm -hmm, mm -hmm. Uh, and they, 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 you know, they've got to have a logo with headphones and a microphone in it and a waveform. And we see if we can get all the VO tropes into one logo. And they unleash this brand that looks like every other voice actor out there. So they don't do the one thing that they were hoping to do with branding, which is different yourself, right? Yep. <laughs> um, and it becomes, there's so much wasted time. And at the beginning of your career, is the time that you have the least time to waste because that's when you've got to create the biggest push yeah. to create the momentum. Yeah. Right? Have you seen my website? I have not. Okay. So my, my wife is in IT, so we, we did our own website through GoDaddy. And right. I was just looking at a lot of other people, and they all have, you know, um, you know Jim, Jim Bob's happy clients. And then there would be the the list of them. So I wrote JJ's happy clients, and I actually paid I think about a hundred bucks for a picture of seven people sitting at a desk going <laughs> <laughs> like this. And then underneath it, I, I my wife wrote, "Dear honey, I love you, but I think you need a different picture." <laughs> and see, that's something that stands out. People have called me about that and said, "I got to work with you. If you did something that daring." That's cool. Yeah. So think about what that does strategically, right? JJ, obviously you've thought about it, but for those of you listening and watching, it shows confidence, right? Yep. Only somebody who's supremely confident That's in true. their abilities to deliver can take a chance like that or yes. will take a chance like that. Never thought it's of it that way, Paul, but thank you. You're right. It's cojones <laughs> or, stu call, right? or stupidity on my part. <laughs> Uh, but it also shows you're fun to work with, right? You got a sense of humor. You don't take yourself too seriously. And that's like, that takes a long people. It takes a long time to let go of the precious image that we're trying to put out there and just be yourself. Yeah. And have fun, no, I'm right? just me. Yeah. I used to get hired and I would say, why did you hire me for this gig? Back in the days when we went to the studios, they said, ah, cause we like to watch you work. And I went, okay, cool. 
because yeah. they said you really get into it physically and it's it's fun to watch and that's what makes you good. And I went, cool, cool. This makes you different. That's what I try and teach in my course, right? It's one yeah. thing to provide a professional product, but you know what? That's table stakes, right? Yeah. You should be able to go to any voice actor in America, any pro and get a professional product. What's going to set you apart is, are you fun and easy to work with, right? Exactly. You go a little bit over and above for your client without getting taken advantage, of course, right? right. Uh, are you like, do they want, do they look forward to sessions with you? Right. Yes. Do you, do you, or do, but do you present yourself as a pro within that? Right. You gotta be quick. You gotta be efficient. You want, you don't want unnecessary noise in the session, but you also want to be fun and engaging and personal and, yeah. you know, real. Right. I try to get them laughing as soon as I possibly can. Yeah. 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 Absolutely. Yeah, it's just, they, it puts them at ease almost immediately. Absolutely. That's all, and, you know, that comes from, that's all client experience, customer experience, right? Yes. It's not just about getting <laughs> the thing. It's about how you provide the thing. And right. it's not just, you know, well, 24 hour turnaround. Well, great. Everybody can do that. Right. right. Mm -hmm. But it, you know, are you going to send me an article that makes me laugh? Right. Are you going to, are you going to send me a, you know, obviously everybody has, you, you don't want you want to stay away from sex and politics and religion, right? But once you develop a relationship with people, be real with them. Be real while you're developing the relationship. Yes, right? absolutely. Okay. Absolutely. A quick story for you. I think you'll like this. And this goes to the other side of the coin that you, during a session, it's better to be that way and easy and, and, and things like that and not get too big a head, no yes. matter how well you're doing, because I've watched several people and made a lot of money because they, uh, this is a true story. I was in a session with my friend. I will not mention names. We were reading the copy and halfway through, he stopped and looked up at the writer and said, and the producer and the director and the, the client and his mother and whoever else was there that day and said, God, this copy is really iffy. Who wrote this? And it, it took about two seconds and the producer pushed the button and said, you did three years ago. <laughs> Really? <laughs> I just, wow. I just, my legs got rubbery and I just went, oh, you dumbass. <laughs> <laughs> you, you really dumbass. Oh, and that's two days terrible. later, I had the Ford account. There you go. Um, hello. Yeah. You can't get a big head in this business either. You can't come off that way because now, especially now, there's 45 zillion, 382 billion, cadillion, 427, well, whatever. There's a lot of people doing this now, and they're gladly call somebody else. Yeah, yeah, and you're not getting, you know, stay in your lane. You're not getting paid to be a copy analyst. No, you're getting paid to read. What I don't write. I read exactly. Yeah. yeah. Yep. But my favorite thing is if it's a minute nine, they take out. Let's uh, uh, let's take out the. Okay, let's go again. <laughs> <Yeah>. what <laughs> i had a session not too long ago it was for uh it was a commercial that was going to run at a gas kiosk right when you're pumping your gas and they, you get the tv here oh, yeah. Yeah. yeah 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 you'll throw it throw an ad in there it was supposed to be an eight second ad and it was 11 seconds worth of copy and if you don't do this every day you think well three seconds that's not bad right i can cut that out of there not in an eight seconds, you know, not, not at that proportion. That's like more than 30% of what you yes. got. Cut, right. Yes. And so we spent about a half an hour getting the timing right. And then another probably 10 to 15 minutes making it sound human again. Right. right? And that because the they, they didn't want to budge on the copy. Right. And then the client said, well, since we have a little bit more time now, let's add another product to the thing. And you go, <laughs> what? Yeah. What? Yeah. Let's add a tag to that eight second spot. <laughs> ah! All right. You've done 80 takes. Now that you're warmed up, let's, let's do one more. Let's go back to the beginning. Yeah. Oh, my favorite. Well, we've got you for the hour. Yeah. So yeah. let's just hang out. Even though we were done in five minutes. Yeah. Let's call the client, get approval and you can just hang. Right. Okay. <laughs> yeah. I'll just hang. Typical story. And one of my first exposures ever to the world of voiceover was as a child, I'm watching the Johnny Carson show. Oh. And the actor James Coburn was on Johnny oh, Carson. Oh, I love him. And he, you know, great, fantastic yes. set of pipes. Yes. Well, James Coburn for a while was the spokesperson for Schlitz beer. Yes. Right? Which I don't even yes. know if you can buy anymore. Yes. And he told I hope not. to Johnny. <laughs> <laughs> I, I, I hope not too. It was awful. <laughs> um, but he, he told the story to Johnny, the old, we have you for an hour story. Mm -hmm. 
the 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 two words that he had to say the entire session were Schlitz light. Yeah. They kept him for the entire hour. They did over ninety takes. I think it was. I might have that wrong. And they used take two. Yep. <laughs> That's classic. That I did a classic. Florida lottery spot on camera where I came out of the woods with the ticket in my hand and I said, I won 94 takes. Oh my God. Oh my and God. I kept saying, I don't know how else to say this. <laughs> I won. I can put a three second pause. I won. <laughs> I was out of ideas. I didn't know what to do. I yeah. won. Yeah. Now you're, I out, won. Of, you're, you're out of ideas won. still in the single digits. Now yes. maybe it's on camera. Maybe in the do or yep. low double digits, but that's just ridiculous. Well, I had a session like that I've talked about with you, JJ, and, and our, our listeners that I got hired to say like five words. And at the beginning of the session, it was on ISDN. The guy goes, do you know how much you're making per word? He was like angry at what my agent had negotiated. <laughs> so that's how the session started. So then it was his mission to keep me for the full hour. And I did 90 plus takes of mm -hmm. that line because he had to get his money's worth, you know. Yeah. Because and he knew he had what he wanted in probably five takes. Yeah, I know. Right? This is being a vengeful jerk. <laughs> Paul, I want to say that I like your values. Thank you. From what I'm hearing and what you're doing in the marketing world, I didn't know what to expect because I'm very skeptical of so many people trying to make money sure. on these poor souls trying to get into the business. And I see now that you are real. Well, thank you. I and I like that very, very much. I, um, I, I think my program, which by the way, is called the VO freedom master plan. Uh, I think, um, it's different chiefly for a number of reasons, but, but, but this is one of those reasons. I don't take anybody with a credit card. You can't go to a website and go enroll in my program, right? Wow. Because I need to know number one, that I can help you. And to know that, I need to hear your story. More importantly, I need to hear what your vision of success is for you, right? right. Not for anybody else. Everybody comes into this thing with different uh, wants, needs, goals, backgrounds, situations, right? Some people want to do this part-time forever, but they just want to make more money doing it, right? Right. Some people... It's a tough job to do part-time. Do you agree? It, for some people, yes. Yes, yes. I agree. Yeah. Uh, but, uh, you know, one of the secrets to, to this... Uh, this pursuit is figuring out how to scale your time yep. because, you know, ideally you're going to have some paid work coming in and you're yep. going to need time to do that. So yep. the time as your paid work grows, your time to market shrinks. Yep. Right. That's the problem. You get working so much, you don't market at all. That's and then it slows up. down and yep. stops and you go, yep. oops. And then you get comfortable. You're like, I have all these, oh, yeah. oh, you know, please. and then all of a sudden one client retires and then another one, a, a business closes down and you're like, uh Oh, right. Yeah. You know, now what? I have. We all know the way the accounts end. You're you're having dinner mm -hmm. with your wife, and you're watching television, and there's somebody else doing Ford. And I <laughs> looked at her and I said, "Well, um, there's a secondhand store down the street, which I think we're going to need to start shopping at." <laughs> <laughs> and that's you know not. Hey, yeah. my God, you never missed a session in three years. You were always there. You were always. Thank you. No. Yeah. Yeah. Bye. No. Yeah. Somebody who sucks is now doing my account. <laughs> yeah. I've told this story before. One of my gateway clients, when I say gateway, I, I booked an insane amount of voiceover work in a very short amount of time. And that's what allowed me to make the jump uh, to full time. And one of my gateway clients, I had done 50 videos for them. Uh, we had a fantastic relationship, the people that I worked with. Uh, they would send me scripts. I would bang them out within a couple of hours. They would pay me within a couple of hours. We got into a great rhythm. We had a great feedback system and pickups and everything. And we had a call that August after we finished that video series. And they said, we love working with you. We love our relationship. We, uh, we love the work that you do. We have four more lines of videos that we want to do with you. And this is an, an exact quote. The work is virtually endless. Wow. wow. Which means it's over soon. Two weeks later. <laughs> we know that. Two weeks later, I got a call and said, yeah, the CEO wants a younger sounding guy. Yeah. <laughs> I love this business. Yeah. Where's my hammer? Yeah. <laughs> that, at the time, that was 50% of my income, JJ. Yeah. Yeah. Right. Well, car spots were 50% of mine before COVID. Yeah. 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 I, I was I doing 80 a month. No, I do three. Thing too. Yeah, my retail has completely dwindled. I'm still waiting for that to come back. 
Yeah. Dw- yeah dwindled. Got- I love that word. What's that? Dwindled. dwindled. It's dwindled. That and woo woo. <laughs> so, Paul, do people book a call with you? Is that how they get in touch with you? So, yeah, if you go to VLFreedomMasterPlan.com, you can learn about the program. And then if you decide you want to apply for a strategy call, you can do that there. There are three requirements because in order oh, for Oh, I'm me, only 5'8". Is that all right? I'm 5'7 and a quarter, JJ. Okay. All right. So <laughs> I'm working. Okay. I used to be 5'8", but I shrunk. <laughs> <laughs> By the way, when your female doctor tells you you've lost an inch right after a prostate exam, oh dear, you start oh. to panic a little bit. So you go to VOFreedomMasterPlan.com and you can learn about the program, apply for a call. The three requirements are you have to have either already have them in your possession and are using them or are very close to having a commercial demo and a narration demo, right? And a solid website. It cannot look like your uh, son's third grade buddy did your website. It has to be <laughs> fairly professional. Now we can help you with that and help you help you clean it up. Uh, but but I have those three requirements because that means generally that you are ready or are re- already are seeking work. Right, smart enough to get to that point. Yes, <laughs> know enough about the business. Yes, yes, that's that's great. See, that's those are the things that that I look for too. Mm-hmm. And I still won't recommend anybody until I put them through a session. Well, and that's the thing. That's when we sit down, it's not it's not a five minute conversation. Oh it's no. Forty five minute conversation where I learn about you and your story and more importantly what you want to do. Right. Because if I can't help you, I'll tell you. Right? Yeah. Yeah. Maybe you want to work in uh, you know, in a genre where going after work directly uh doesn't really help. Right. We might learn that during the call. I'm going to tell you, look, I can I can get you other kinds of work. I can I can teach you how to find other kinds of work. And if you're using that, let's say, to build a body of work to get a really great agent who specializes in animation to get some of that work. Yes, but it's not a direct route there. And I have students in my program that that's exactly the route they want to take. They got to live in L.A. Well, yes, but that's changing, right? Atlanta's a hotbed, Toronto's a hotbed, right? My bed is hot. I I didn't get the cooling kind with the mattress. I I would say that I probably get um, 40% of the students because I I work out of a production facility, I was telling you. Um, And so I have a physical space where people come that usually live on Long Island or the tri-state area, and then they come and they train here, which is fantastic. But I would say the the consultations, 40% come in because they want to do animation. Mm-hmm. And I flat out say that is not my road. Right. If you want to do, and I laugh, I go the boring stuff like corporate and e-learning and, you know, you want to actually make money in this business. I can guide you for performance, but otherwise I'm not the person for that. We do not coach what we do not know. Right. Um, and right. Uh, the same with the demo process for us. It's extremely organic where there's no timeline and we will only produce a demo for someone who is totally ready for one and yeah. can actually deliver in the booth after they don't need us coaching them to deliver the performance i would give you a standing ovation except nobody needs to see my crotch right now (laughs) okay so i I thought this was going to be a fun podcast linda (laughs) (laughs) but so you know that's i applaud you for that (laughs) yeah because it started off actually years ago where i would have people come to the studio and they would have paid one of these companies, like six grand to make a demo and say, well, I got this demo. No, what do I do? And I'm like, you made the demo in six weeks. You weren't ready for it. You wasted all of this money. And then that's when I was like saying to JJ, we got to help some people here. We got to tell them the truth and we've got to help them as mentors and help guide them, you know, to, to go into this business with their eyes open, you yeah. know, with transparency. I got a demo from somebody like that. I, I have several times and I said, where are you doing? He went, give me the name. And I went, Oh, how much did you pay? <laughs> oh, 4,000. I went, okay, send me the demo. So I get the demo and I listen to it. And of course it's just the best thing you've ever heard in your life. Beautifully. Produced. And so I said, okay, we're going to play a game. I'm going to send you three pieces of copy. I need them back in an hour. Uh, edited and in time and debreathed. Thanks. And I got back just the worst possible reason. I said, what happened? To the guy on the demo. Right. How long did it take you to do? Yeah. Well, we did it over the course of, like Linda says, about six weeks. And I went, you have an hour to get three spots done, not six weeks. Right. And I said, if you can't live up to the demo, you're going to send it. They're going to try you. And they're never going to call you again. And word is going to travel. 
Yes. Absolutely. And I feel so badly for people like that. And that that's, I follow Linda exactly. That's why we started this. Yeah. I don't BS anybody. You know, if, if, I, anyway, I, 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 try I had to, to tell, be, I had a and I'm genuinely to... happy when they book a job over me, which one of our students oh, did. The other yeah, that day. happens a lot, which I'm genuinely awesome. happy. That's I had great, a guy though. come in yesterday for a consultation. So passionate, but a lisp. So I had to be honest with him and say, you're going to need to work extra hard if this is something you want to get into. And I'm telling you right now, you know, that there are ways to work on it, but this is something that you're going to have to factor in, you know, and it's because it's not about the money for us. Right. Um, also, I don't, I'm not going to enjoy lying to somebody and trying to teach someone who no. doesn't have the capability. Did you have to um, dry yourself off? You, you <laughs> what? Did you have to dry yourself off? <laughs> <I'm sorry>. I don't <laughs> what? I'm talking and thinking, and I'm not thinking of whatever perverse thing you're thinking and saying. <laughs> Um, so no, I, I think you're absolutely right. I've got, absolutely. I, I've got, sure. I've got to provide for my family. Right. And I'm a single dad, so I'm a one income house. Uh, but at the oh, end of the day, we I are a lot alike, sir. Got to put my head on the pillow at night, JJ. Yeah. And exactly if right. I can't help you, I'm going to tell you that if somebody is selling you BS, I, without insulting that person's character, will do my best to tell you that's not in agreement with how I teach things, right? right. Um, and sometimes that's a very tricky line because I do think there are some good people in this business that are misguided themselves, right? Mm -hmm. um, at, at, at the worst and at the best, we just disagree. That's fine. Um, but I think that, you know, you've got to be, you've got to be as forthright as you can with people that are asking you without just assassinating somebody's character. Right. And exactly. I've, I've, exactly. I've traded over that line before. Yeah. Right. But hopefully I've learned from it and, yeah. and moved on. Well, know? like that fellow, that's what I told him when I called him back and I said, obviously given the time, you're pretty good. Yeah. And I said, what you have to do now is practice it so that you can get it done faster. Yeah. I'm not saying that you're terrible. I'm saying that you're really pretty good, but just you just haven't work. done it enough yet exactly. to do it at the speed at which it happens today. I was. And like, I told him I'd be happy to work with you. Yeah, yeah. You yeah. know, yeah. and it won't cost four thousand dollars. Right. I was in the room uh, years ago. I think it was at Mavo, uh, the Mid Atlantic Voiceover Conference, and Kari Walgren was there, and she's you know done every probably every cartoon ever made in the last 25 years, right? And she said something that always stuck with me. And I, I, you would think coming from radio, I would do my own demos, right? Because I got the audio production skill. Well, the audio production skill is not making a demo, right? right. She said, never do your, your own demos because a bad demo is worse than no demo. And a bad demo can be wonderfully produced... But if it does, if it overshadows the talent, if it doesn't show the talent's range, if uh, it doesn't accurately, to your point, JJ, reflect what that talent can do in the booth on their own every day, <laughs> yes. it's a shitty demo, right? Yep. It just yeah. is. Yep. Um, it could be the greatest thing since canned beer. And if, if that's not reflective of you, right? right? I mean, you can't swing a dead cat without hitting a bad demo. Thank you. Aww. Thank you. We just hit the trifecta. Okay. <laughs> I think that should be your logo now, by the way. Just a little marketing advice for you. <laughs> dead, dead cat swinging productions. <laughs> So just a video put, of a guy doing this. That's all. <laughs> just, we're going to put the links to your uh, website uh, and uh, that way people can find it a little easier. But just repeat again, Paul, what, where you want people to go. Sure. It's it's called VOFreedomMasterPlan.com or you can go to PaulSchmidtPro.com. Either one will will get you there. And Whoops. I cool. just, my I like screensaver. how you uh, Oh, my God. I'm high. <laughs> oh, sorry. <laughs> Wouldn't you know my screensaver kicked in just in time I wanted to show the website. I love that, man. Wait, <laughs> well this is great we love uh your you know your approach and and wish you the best of luck with everything hopefully i can't good. tell you what fun i had with you guys today so thank you for reaching Likewise. out and uh and, and ask thanks for having class and and being a good person depends on who you ask jj <laughs> depends on who you ask well we're you pretty couldn't bad. swing a dead cat and ask anybody you'd say anything bad we're pretty picky about who we have on the podcast. So you think we have to have folks of similar mindset, uh, and yeah. that's where you know I felt that you 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 fit in. Yeah, I'm thank you. Glad that we thank have you. This was a good one. Thank yeah. you guys. This was a good one. Excellent. Yeah, I I yeah. love to see you know I've, I've God I look if 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 I try to pass along not only my experience but that of people that I've picked up and respect. 
right? And because we all help each other in this business, right? The yes. pros do. Yes. Uh, we're not we're not uh, competitors. We're collaborators, really. At the end of the day, um, and there's people. I mean, there's a billion people that helped me, right? And for any newer voice actor out there, there's going to be a billion people that help you. And if you accept that help, in my mind, you also tacitly agree to pass that help along. Right. Mm -hmm. We're all we're all on the spectrum somewhere. Right. There's always somebody right. better than me and always somebody worse than me. And Return I, the favor. Yeah. Yeah. Pay it forward. I love it when that stuff. doesn't happen. <laughs> That's my favorite thing. Yeah. Yeah. But uh, I don't mind when it doesn't come back to me as long as it goes to somebody else. Right? No, I want it to come exactly. back to me. Exactly. <laughs> oh, JJ. We pass along a lot of happiness and I know. goodwill. I know. And I know. Maybe it's time for some pills for me. I don't know. I know. We love I when our know. students are successful. It's the greatest Absolutely. That we can Absolutely. Best thing in the world. Yeah. 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 So folks, well, gosh, this has been over. fun. Mm -hmm. We have, uh, this is going to be, uh, wow, we're right on the cusp of December. So it's going to play in December, play. It's going to play in December, this podcast. No, it's already um, played. And we have a couple we already of online, aired it. online workouts for folks on the Wednesday nights, the first three Wednesdays of the month. Um, if anybody does care to join us. 21st might be light, JJ. It's right before the holiday. I don't know. Oh, I'm not, I'm not even, I got, I got to, I got to send you an email. that. Oh, I great. Read. Right when I just announced everything. Fantastic. <laughs> okay. So there's probably only two workouts in the month. Well, I didn't know that till last night late. My oh, brother-in-law okay. invited us up on the 21st and for the 22nd party. Okay. All I right. mean, well, and it it's going to be so big. You week. couldn't, you couldn't swing a dead cat without okay. hitting a relative. It's just, it's <laughs> And just... don't forget too that if- <laughs> I love are... that phrase. I've always loved that phrase, Paul. <laughs> well, you give me a phrase and I'm going to beat it to a dead cat. <laughs> okay. <laughs> what do you call a dog with no legs? Nothing. He doesn't come if you call him anyway. <laughs> uh, can I just finish my little pitch? <laughs> yes, please. Please do, Linda. Sorry. <laughs> Those that want to study with us, very easy. Just head on over to voiceover.guru. Uh, website's been redone by me. Um, and uh, join us for a workout, though, if you have uh, a little bit of experience or you just want to play around and have some fun. JJ's pretty nice during the workouts. Um, yes. Sometimes. Yes. And uh, otherwise, yeah. Thanks again, Paul. It was really, really nice meeting you. Thank you, Ruby, man. It was a pleasure, and I hope we get to cross paths next year when I come to Uncle Roy's. Hopefully, we'll uh, I'll, I'll get to meet you. Uh, I might get myself over there. Yeah. Are you going to that holiday thing? Because I don't think I'm going to make that. I was, and uh, so I got nominated for a Sovis Award, which is the following. Is it the following? No, it's two weekends later. And uh, I just, you know what? I've been traveling all fall. I just, I, I needed a break, so I had to beg out of that. But uh, have a great time. No, I'm not going either. I, I, oh. I thought I was going to go. I know, but I'm getting married, and the only day that we can get all the guys together to put on suits is, is uh, that day. Hey, congratulations. That's fantastic. Thank you. Thank yeah. you. So I have yeah. a legit reason, too. But um, anyway, okay, that wraps it up for another episode of the VoiceOver Gurus podcast. Da, 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 da. Da, 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 da. Everyone have a great rest of your day, week, Don't month, tell me what to do. All oh, right. right. <laughs> Thanks, guys. Thank you. Thank guys. you. Bye. Thanks for listening to the VoiceOver Gurus podcast. Real talk about the voiceover industry. Learn more about us and get coaching at voiceover.guru.